Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Mill Home Supper Club, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, and North Star Mohican Casino Resort. Steve Levy's up first on Inside Wisconsin. Shut up and sit down. So here's Steve Levy uh, from his car. Trevor's got a fifteen thousand dollar, whatever it is, grand studio. <laughs> yeah. Levy's got Levy, Levy's got an SUV. I think that works out just fine. Might be uh, more than fifteen grand. Off, just the name of the show is Inside Wisconsin. Oh, you support, is, is Wisconsin your favorite uh, Midwestern state? I'm trying to think if I can name any other Midwestern states. You know me, I'm an East Coast <laughs> West Coast guy. Wait, there are other states. Are where, like, where am I from? Texas? Nope. Wisconsin. Close. Yeah. Good guess. And and Wisconsin's not Ohio. It's not Indiana. It's not Iowa. It's none of those. No, but you uh, you did go to Missouri. Right. Which is so. It's all pretty much. It's it's one big one big place to you, right? Pretty much. Yeah. But you love it. It's okay. Which one? All of them. Okay. Probably so, this one. <laughs> I've I've always enjoyed my time in Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> In all my many stops, say, hang on, no, no, I've been to Madison. I've done a, I've done a, a bunch of college football games in Madison too. That's still in Wisconsin, right? Yeah. See, there you go. You're down. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to Wrightstown? No, I don't think. Where's that? <laughs> what is south of here? So, uh, so we're in Green Bay, and I, I took a picture of this sign. And I, maybe I said it to you. Maybe I didn't. What's the really long town next to Green Bay? Oga Wabi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ash Wabanon. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, it's kind I'm, of a, not, I'm not from there. Yeah. Kind of a Tony suburb. Yeah. It's uh so we went, you know, the, the facility, I guess, you know, Lambeau and then the practice facility across the street, like, you know, one block over is that that fine <laughs> town or enclave. Sure. Yes. Yeah. It's a hamlet. A hamlet. <laughs> say it again. How do you say it again? Ash Wabanon. Oh yeah. Everybody knows You're right that. there. <laughs> All right. So All right, we're not so- here to just make fun that, that you always – because you poke fun at me from being I, – I think you and I are always like that scene in in, in Miracle when the Wisconsin – or the Minnesota and the Boston guys get together. I feel like you think I'm a bumpkin, and I think you're a city slicker. Like, you could take the subway, and <laughs> I would be lost for four days down there. And, you know, so yeah. you got to know your limitations on this thing. So that's, hey, that's, why so we're together, bud. that's why we're a great combination. We got we draw on each other's experiences. We had it all covered, yeah. We got it right. <laughs> so listen, you've been to a lot of places, you've done a ton of games. Just tell me what it's like to do a game at Lambeau Field. So honestly, um I people ask this all the time, like my favorite three atmospheres in the NFL. And this is as a fan and uh, working a game, and Lambeau and Green Bay is in the top three. I've got Green Bay, Kansas City, Seattle in some order. And uh, and like I said, I've had the benefit of going to a game as a fan, too, which was really, really cool. Uh, I'll just give you that quick story So um, for, your, for your massive audience here, John, because I know you already know it. But a few years ago, the Patriots were in town, and uh, a bunch of the Boston guys wanted to go. And so we went to the game. And these are, you know, big-time, let's say stereotypical – Boston, Massachusetts, New England type fans, the jerseys, hearty accents, hearty (laughs) attitudes, hearty appetites for everything. Anyway, the locals could not have been nicer, could not have been nicer. And it was November. We still had cold beer and it was freezing on the aluminum benches and all that. And we had the best time, right? We had, we had the best, best time. It was such a great experience. We did the, uh, the Butterburger thing as well as the first. And uh, I keep looking around for the four seasons of Ritz Carlton. I haven't noticed one yet. Uh, but, we, you know, we had a great time there. And then broadcasting, bud, is like, uh, you know, it's got it's got all the modern conveniences and still has somehow kept sort of the old-fashioned charm. Like, the, the broadcast booth is unbelievable. And so it's a great setup. And just the people are so nice. The fans, uh, the staffers there, everybody there. So... Uh, it just makes for an overall great experience, and I guess my my wrap up there is both as a, as a professional working there and just as a football fan to be able to go have a good time every time I go. But yeah, you can thank Brown County for that one. We've been paying for that beautiful <laughs> little box that you get to sit in for uh, quite some time now. But that saved the team. We're all thank in. So yeah. 
John sent me a text uh, on a Friday that you were in town, Steve, and he said, hey, Levy wants to go someplace, have a great meal, and see some things. And I'm like, where are we going here? And my first response was, I'll go pick him up. We'll go out to dinner. I'll show him some things. And John's like, no, no, no. Just tell me where he needs to go and eat. So out of curiosity, where the hell did you go to eat that night? I never got the follow-up. So, yeah, so this is a good story and then not such a good story. Uh, first of all, Trevor, you should have come pick me up. Could have used a running mate there. Uh, how, how come Anderson doesn't know where to go? What what's, what does that say about him, you know? It's been some so time. I wound up at that uh, the chop the chop house, right? The chop house? Yeah, the public chop house, yep. Right, so we went up there, uh, had a very nice meal, and uh, I wound up leaving my credit card there. I'm oh, a good no. tipper, but not that good a tipper, and uh, I left <laughs> my credit card there. And so uh, the next, I didn't realize that till the next night, and I wound up saying I got to go back and get my credit card. So I wound up eating there both nights. That's how that went nice. out, <laughs> out of convenience. And uh, figure they were going to charge my card twice anyway, so I might as well uh, get a second good meal. But it's a great place. People are very nice. Uh, watch the Sunday night game there. So it's, uh, it's a great setup, man. The whole town's great. Everything's really close, convenient. I love the airport. Even I'm a big <laughs> fan of. Uh, yeah. How do you say the name of the airport there? What's that? Come on. <laughs> it's Austin Straubel Austin. Airport. Oh, are those Lee Steinberg? No, it's the... <laughs> it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Great so, airport. I'm curious. When you're in these different cities, Steve, and specifically here in Green Bay, our friends at Festival are the official tailgate headquarters of Lambeau Field. And do you get to participate or view or see? Or, I mean, what does that look like for you on a game day? Are you just in there so early you don't even get to see it? So that's really the big part, and uh, that's really the only time I question my job. Like, listen, <laughs> this is obviously the greatest job ever, certainly for someone like me, where I came from. This was this was the single dream job, and there's only one seat, and now I'm trying to you know, fight everybody off and try to hang on to it for a little longer. Um, but I do rethink it a little bit because, yes, we get there really early, maybe three and a half hours before the game. And so usually we're driving through or walking through or whatever. And so we see it. And everybody in every city is so happy, right? They're so excited. They're tailgating. They're with their buddies. The food and drink looks all great. And they're going to have an awesome night. And they're not wearing a suit and tie, right? They're in comfortable clothing or a sweatshirt, a hoodie, whatever. And I'm all dressed cheese up. Cheesehead. Get cheesehead in your case, <laughs> yeah. right? And so that's the only time, like, Damn, that looks like a lot of fun. I'd like to be doing that. And then I rethink, you know, the rest of my life. And I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll hang on to this and I'll I'll give up the tailgating. And then, you know, when I'm 85, I'll be able to go and go tailgate through these parking lots. I'll pick you up that day. <laughs> You're gonna need a ride. If you were to tailgate, do you see yourself? Would you wear a cheese head or are you wear now? Would you wear the the sombrero? Yeah, the senior sombrero thing, senior cheese head, that that turned out to be a really cool story. We found out about that really like the day before John Sutcliffe who does a great job on uh, ESPN Deportes. Uh, he clued us all in on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think I could do the cheese head thing, man. I did, <laughs> I did the fake Lambo leap outside. You know, they had that set up for fans to take pictures. Like, that was yeah. really cool. Yeah. That was about, as, you know, I'm not really a touristy type, but that <laughs> I did that. I did take that picture, and that was fun. Yeah, I can't see doing the cheese head thing, man. Yeah. It if you're not touristy, where were you when you sent me the text? I'm sitting here drinking something called a spotted cow, WTF. I, <laughs> I was in that same chop house. Okay. I do like to experience some uh, local flavor. And yep. so I asked the people sitting next to me, you know, what is the local beer I should be drinking? And they said spotted cow. And I'm like, you know, that doesn't sound that appetizing to me from strictly the name. And that's when I sent you the text. And apparently that was the, the, right, the right play. So Not terrible, out, right? Three or four of them. Yeah, really good. It's a good what, play. What's uh, what was Aaron like? Is he in these things? Is he is he all business? Is he playful? Is he what? What's he like when you prepare a game with him? Uh, my single favorite interview on these kind of games is Aaron Rodgers, and uh, uh -huh. no, he's not playful. He was only playful when I bring up Kenny Maine's name. Sure, I try, I try to use that as a soft spot landing, you know, uh, and the to get in. But, no, he gives us, I'd say, the most time of any starting quarterback in the league, which is really cool. Uh, I find him so thoughtful, uh, so insightful, kind of like he is at the line of scrimmage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, he is the ultimate thinking man's quarterback. And um, I would say we spend the mo – so he gives us the most time, 
And then I would say we spend the most time of any quarterback talking about stuff outside of football. You know, uh, he's been such a proponent of mental health, which has really become a, uh, a point of emphasis around the NFL now this year more than ever. And so uh, he'll talk about other players, other places, um, coaching and, st and, and stuff like that. And we sort of touched on, um, you know, what, what, what transpired in the off season. And that's a tricky thing to go back to. Right. So, so for us, you know, it's for us, we're here for the first time. It's week two. They weren't on full national TV week one. So we feel like it's still an important story, but Aaron's been talking about it for, you know, four weeks or sure. camp, six weeks, whatever. So that was a tricky road to go down, but you know, Riddick and Greasy are pretty much all X's and O's. So I, and Lisa and I are the ones who sort of go in on that. And I said to him, this, I thought this was interesting. And I said, uh, if you could change anything, I really try to keep it open-ended for him. If you could change anything about the way everything went down in your off season, what would you change? Mm -hmm. And he thought about it. And he said, I would change one thing. I would crush the leak from draft night. Remember when it came, was reported yep. on draft night, Schefter had the story from wherever he got it, mm -hmm. uh, that he wanted out of Green Bay or wasn't going to return to Green Bay. And he said, I would, I would crush that. He said, I went to all my people. And he said, when I mean my people, I mean my agent, who assures me it wasn't coming from him. Uh, he said he never wants to take away the focus from the kids who were getting drafted on that night. But so, so while that was cool, his real main point, his hidden point was, Nah, he wouldn't have changed anything. He wanted right. to go do and, and see the world and have all his fun. And his comments about the front office, the organization, he meant every word of that. Uh, he was in control of the situation. And in the end, he got exactly what he wanted. Because if he didn't in the negotiation, like anybody else, uh, he wouldn't have come to this yeah. agreement. So, so I think it worked out for him. But I find him uh, very forthright, uh, super insightful. I love talking to him. I very much appreciate his time because I know – how in demand he is. And I also respect uh, all the things he's willing to talk about and get into except, uh, other than football. I know we're pressed on time. We got to talk a little hockey, though, real quick. Steve, in my research, I noticed that you and I have something in common. It's this NHL game in 2000, May 4th, 2000. The Pittsburgh Penguins, Philadelphia Flyers, five overtimes. I was working at a Wisconsin radio station, and for some reason, we had that game on our AM station on low power. I've never been so bored in my life. Seven <laughs> hours of AM national hockey that has nothing to do with Wisconsin, but there I was. So I felt your pain on that. I wanted you to know that. When it comes to Wisconsin hockey, what do you think of, and could we ever get an NHL team here? Uh, I think of Chris Chelios, right? Is that fair? Yep. Yeah. Chelly uh, will be uh, one of my partners on, uh, on ESPN's national hockey night again on the, on the studio side. We uh, rehearsed with Mark Messier and John Tortorelli yesterday. That'll be fun. We we'll start that next week. Uh, listen, for an NHL team, I really don't know. It, you know what it's about now? I get this in Hartford all the time. People want the Whalers to come back. It's really about the building. So you need and, – and it's really about the B, right? You, you need the billionaire now. I'm not sure the millionaire can do it anymore. Right. And you need a place with massive corporate dollars to buy the luxury suites. And so it's it's really less almost about the interest in the team and fan base and ge even geography. It's it's really about um, the structure of the the, fin the finances from deep pockets to corporate to real estate to the building, right? So you need sort of all those four giant things before you even make it into the conversation. And I, I think that makes it really hard. I did drive by that that little arena by Lam Lambo, is that with a rush center? Right? Little, yeah. little. What's the capacity there? Ten thousand. Oh, all right, it's bigger than I thought. See, there you go, <laughs> big enough for your girl Carrie Underwood or whoever it is. No, she's not on your show. Carrie Underwood's not on our air, right? No, she's the <laughs> other one. Sunday, we do Monday. Yeah. Who sings for us? <laughs> Susie Culver. Who sings? I don't even know. <laughs> Susie Culver. <laughs> little Richard. Little Richard sings for us. Yeah. Could be that. Hey, before I before I let you go, this is our last thing because I know uh, people. I, I think people will be fascinated about this. Between yeah. again, when we talk about the differences where we grew up, and I, I'll never forget, you told me that you love summer camp because it's when you got to see grass. And I yeah. don't know that people in Wisconsin get that idea, right. but that literally that was your thing growing up out on Long Island. Yeah, so we just didn't have a backyard. I mean, that that's really what it is. I mean, so 
So we had a, you know, we had a small patch of grass, I would say, not really a backyard at all, and obviously no pool. We grew up playing, we played, we played baseball on cement. I mean, we did. It was like, you know, we'd play with a softball on like a basketball court. And, uh, and this would be in Queens, in, in, you know, in one of the boroughs. And so we would take over a basketball court with a softball and play on cement. And so it was like AstroTurf, right? I mean, every shot, every ground ball was a bullet <laughs> view, right? And, uh, you know, the, the, right, the, the right field fence was so short. If you hit it over that, you were called out because it was so short. And it was a neighborhood. You'd hit into somebody's, you know, apartment. So, so you only had to hit at the left field. You couldn't. Only the toughest guys slid, right? Because again, <laughs> asshole, oh. right? Oh. So anyway, oh. so yes, yeah, so summer camp was sort of our ticket out: a pool, a lake, and uh, the other one. I did go to a very small camp, and I, I think I've told you the story. The water skiing, we did have a lake, but it was not big enough for a boat. So. <laughs> There was a giant pole in the middle of the lake, and it would just pull you around in a, in a circle <laughs> for the water skiing. So if you got good, you were just getting really dizzy, right? <laughs> so, so listen, it's everything I had sort of, you know, baby steps here, and that's why we went to summer camp. And even when we got there, it wasn't exactly what people might think of summer camps. So. By the way, that's called a pond. Yeah. Be. Pool, or pool, pool in a pond. Uh, yeah. Probably good for you. Hey, brother, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Take care of the kids. Uh, we'll see yeah. you on Monday nights, and then we'll see you throughout the hockey season, which will be awesome. Uh, you know, as good as you are, and I love you on my football, sort of have you have you back in your, you know, a duck on his pond uh, in your familiar water. That'll be great. And I can't wait to follow another one of those Levy Five Overtime games. You, you have no <laughs> idea how excited I am at the prospect of that. I love you, John. Trevor, thanks for having me on, bud. Cheers, bud. man. Thanks, buddy. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Mill Home Supper Club, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, and North Star Mohican Casino Resort. Helpful critiques, ideas, great stories, people we should know, the great bar in your town, the fish fry you want to know, the fish boil, anything that you want to reach out to us with, we are happy, we are here. You can be the inputters. We're here to listen.